the Classic Collectors 2 Series, the Great Northern Railway, the most prestigious and critically acclaimed series in railroading history returns as Video Rails presents the all-new 8mm Classic Collector Series on the Great Northern. This incredible collection, which is comprised of footage spanning over 30 years, has been photographed by Anthony DeRosa, who worked for the Great Northern Railway. You will treasure the extensive variety of subjects and unique perspectives that make this series one of the most comprehensive collections of railroading films ever compiled on any railroad. Climb Aboard as Video Rails takes you on a remarkable journey back in time to the legendary days of the Great Northern. Great Northern's vast rail network stretched across seven states, from the Great Lakes to the Pacific Ocean. With headquarters located in Minneapolis, St. Paul, the route extends north to Duluth and Superior, and south to Sioux Falls. Climbing west to Minot, North Dakota, and Great Falls, Montana, and continuing across the Rockies to Spokane. The main line extends south to Klamath Falls, Oregon, with connections to the Western Pacific. The route finally reaches Seattle, Washington, the West Coast gateway to the Orient. Built in February of 1939, this SW-1 was one of nine switchers within this class and originally numbered 5101. It was renumbered as 75 in 1943. These switchers were 600 horsepower and purchased to replace old worn out steam switchers. Engine 180 is an EMD NW3 switcher built in March 1942. These are 1,000 horsepower units that were renumbered in 1943. Engine 205 is a steam boiler equipped RS2 built as 1,500 horsepower units by Alco in August of 1947. These units lasted until 1964 when they were traded to GE. Engine 191 is an NW5 built by EMD for the Great Northern in December 1946. This is one of 10 units built, each with 1,000 horsepower. Engine number three is a 1,000 horsepower S2 class switcher that was built by Alco in February 1950. This engine has been equipped with blunt trucks for switching in yard service. With the increase of traffic in the late 1930s and early 1940s, the Great Northern placed an order for the new EMD FT locomotives. Assigned to the heavy mountain grades west of Haver, Montana, the FTs are put into freight service to help with the tremendous amount of war traffic. Ordered in 1941, the first set is numbered 400 and was delivered in December 1943. These Alco units were first acquired in August 1948 and sold to the Spokane, Portland and Seattle Railway in 1950. Each of these units are 1,500 horsepower. Diesels now occupy the Haver engine facility as they are rapidly becoming the standard form of power for mainline freight trains. Engine 362 is an EMD F7 purchased in October 1948 and is geared for passenger train service.
Great Northern's big sky blue scheme began to show up on the railroad in April 1967 and lasted until the Burlington Northern merger in March 1970. It would be a monumental project to repaint more than 50,000 pieces of equipment from the Orange Empire Builder scheme to the new Big Sky colors. Great Northern promoted its passenger trains during this era in the late 1940s. In this rare 1949 scene in Minot, North Dakota, the Oriental Limited arrives for a brief stop during a winter snowstorm. Mail has become a large revenue source for passenger trains, with mail and baggage cars added to the consists. Leaving Haver, this local train is west of Fort Benton as it heads for Great Falls, Montana. At Williston, North Dakota on May 13, 1950, a pilot train precedes the presidential train of Harry S. Truman, which is scheduled to make a stop here. The train carrying President Truman arrives at the station. It is powered by three pristine F units leading eight heavyweight cars from the Empire Builder. President Truman is returning to Washington, D.C. after dedicating the Grand Coulee Dam on the Columbia River. The observation car is the presidential car named the Ferdinand Magellan. Built by Pullman in 1928 and used by FDR, this car has three inch thick bulletproof glass windows and is also bomb proof. It is so heavy that it weighed more than most small locomotives. The car was last used by President Reagan and now resides at the Gold Coast Railroad Museum in Florida. Ordered in 1943 and delivered between April and June of 1945, the new E7As were to replace steam on the Empire Builder passenger trains. Loading passengers and mail, engine 509, a single E7, will be leaving the Helena Depot in 1955 with train 235, the daily local. Locomotive 508 arrives from Butte, Montana, making its stop at the Helena Depot. Racing through Fargo, North Dakota, the Red River arrives in town for its stop. The E-7's passenger locomotives also powered the Gopher, the Badger, the Winnipeg, and the Cascadia, as well as other famous Great Northern trains.
Crossing the high bridge at Cutbank, Montana in 1948, the Empire Builder is heading west on her journey to Seattle. At Summit, just west of Glacier Park in the summer of 1956, the Empire Builder, train number three, is westbound for Seattle. By the early 1950s, diesels have replaced steam power on all of the mainline passenger trains. Leaving Spokane, Washington in 1955, Train 28 has both coaches, baggage cars, and express refrigerator cars in the consist. Train 27 arrives in Spokane, powered by an ABA set of F units. Included in the train is a New York Central Express boxcar returning to the East Coast. Engine 250 is an AB set of FTs, originally numbered 5700. They are now departing with the Cascadian from the Spokane Depot. A single F unit leaves Spokane with the daily train to Coeur d'Alene, Idaho.
Engine 358 leads her local daily train to Colfax, Washington. At Spring Valley, the train proceeds under slow orders past the track crew. Great Northern purchased five of these new Empire Builder trains in 1947. They are powered by E7s capable of running 117 miles per hour. This purchase scooped the Northern Pacific and the Milwaukee Road in transcontinental service. At Division Street in Spokane, a director's special led by engine 363 passes by the camera in this 1959 scene. A number of great northern business cars are in this train, such as A1, A12, and A28. In 1971, with the merger and creation of the Burlington Northern, a curious group of passenger cars and locomotives appear in BN trains. Led by an SDP-40 and two F-7B units, this train will soon arrive at the St. Paul station with the Western Star. With a Burlington Northern Dome Flasher installed, this train also arrives led by a pair of E7s. With the arrival of new SDP 45s in June 1967, Great Northern enters the high horsepower realm of diesel power as these units are rated at 3,600 horsepower each. Great Northern also purchased 25 SD45s for freight service with deliveries beginning in May 1966. These units are also rated at 3,600 horsepower. Running as a Burlington Northern train, this SDP-40 leads an unusual combination of passenger cars and piggyback cars. Great Northern's main competitor across the Rocky Mountains is the Northern Pacific. This GP9 was purchased by the NP at a cost of $170,000 in 1955. Taking delivery of the new EMD FT locomotives in 1944, Northern Pacific began to replace some of its steam fleet with diesel power. With both railroads running out of St. Paul, Minnesota, it was common to see the Empire Builder and the North Coast Limited side by side.
The Chicago, Quincy, and Burlington also ran into St. Paul. Here, the Burlington Zephyr arrives at the station. CB and Q use both E7s, E8s, and E9s to power their passenger trains. At the Hilliard shops, a pair of Spokane, Portland, and Seattle F7s are tied down alongside the engine facility. An F, A, and B set are also located adjacent to the yard office. Near Washington Power, an SPNS train led by three Alcos numbered 97, 98, and 96 passed by en route to Portland, Oregon. The only E-unit SPNS owned was number 750 and is used on train number one and two between Spokane and Portland. Also in this consist is the GN Pendulum car. In 1970, at Portland's Union Station, diesels in the SPNS paint scheme still serve passengers from this terminal. This F unit is now a Burlington Northern unit and carries a new number, 9754. During this period of transition from five contributing roads to the new giant road that is now the Burlington Northern, the passengers certainly must have been confused. The Spokane International Railroad is a small, closely held railroad built in 1906 between Spokane and Ute, British Columbia. Connections are made here with the Canadian Pacific Railway. This 140-mile long carrier functioned as a bridge route linking Canadian traffic to western railroads in Spokane. The Canadian Pacific retained control over this railroad for a period of time. In 1956, an agreement was reached with the Union Pacific to purchase this line. Management was transferred to Union Pacific subsidiary, the Oregon-Washington Railroad and Navigation Company. The equipment and operations are relocated to the new East Spokane Yard. Spokane International's maintenance of way equipment included wood bunk cars with plenty of windows. Much of their equipment dates back to the turn of the century. They also had a wood spreader that is used for maintenance along the right-of-way. Also seen as a homemade water car that has two tanks bolted to a flat car and an old steam tender. In 
in this early scene at St. Paul. The first of the new Burlington Northern paint schemes can be seen on the last E unit. With the creation of the Burlington Northern, the combination of road power leads to some interesting locomotive lash-ups. Northern Pacific Diesels led this train to the station at St. Paul, with the third engine painted in the new BN colors. With raw diesel fuel and smoke blasting from the exhaust stacks, this train is using CB and Q E units on its run to Chicago. Arriving at Haver, Montana in 1971, this train, led by a Northern Pacific diesel and three painted Burlington Northern units, will make a stop at the station. The Great Northern motor cars are self-contained powered units that are also referred to as doodlebugs. Unit 2331 has been rebuilt with a 300 horsepower diesel engine. Originally, this unit was manufactured by Brill Westinghouse. The gas electrics are used to haul both freight and passengers on the numerous branch lines that span the Great Northern system. Later in service, they sometimes pulled extra baggage cars or coaches. Gas electrics are also used to bring supplies to station agents in remote locations along the vast expanse of the GN route. Great Northern had also purchased this bud-built RDC car in July 1956 for use between Great Falls and Butte, Montana. This car made two trips daily one during the day and another trip at night, which ran between Butte and Billings. A round trip of 810 miles was made every 24 hours for the only RDC the Great Northern ever owned. Great Northern maintained a fleet of trucks to haul freight to and from the rail stations in Montana to be delivered directly to customers that are not located on the right-of-way. Smaller trucks are also used to move goods to and from the freight house. In this 1956 scene at the Great Falls Yard Office, automobiles assigned to GN officials are painted in Great Northern's orange scheme.
Early piggyback service was developed to explore a new form of transportation, which is soon to become a major form of transportation. Common flat cars are used with two small truck trailers being loaded on each car. A simple loading ramp was built near the yard to facilitate loading and unloading. Maintenance of way vehicles are also painted in Great Northern Orange. Great Northern also painted their crew buses in orange to match their trains. The section leader groups his men for a portrait in front of their bus. At Whitefish, Montana, the Great Northern's Western Star makes a stop for passengers. This location is a favorite for tourists and skiers alike. The Great Northern has a large bus to take passengers to Kalispell for their vacation. Great Northern also used rail cars like this 1956 Buick for track inspection service. While parked in a siding, these officials are inspecting the passing train. Now in the clear, the car can continue down the track. On the Viola branch, the inspectors stopped to check on damage to the roadbed because of flooding. At Palouse, Idaho, a road foreman stops to inspect a bridge for damage. Heavy seasonal rains require frequent inspections to ensure safe passage for trains. Rolling into Moscow, Idaho, the rail car will pull up to the yard house for the night. Further inspections will resume in the morning as the routine begins again. This machine is a velocipede and is powered by a single person. There is no doubt that Great Northern pioneered exercise equipment. Great Northern maintained their roadbed to the highest of standards. In 1962, the railroad embarked on an ambitious program to upgrade their track work. The railroad decided to install continuous welded rail, or what is commonly known as ribbon rail. Rail is being loaded onto special rail cars designed to handle quarter mile long segments of track. The 39 foot sections are bolted together to form a longer single piece. Once these longer sections are completed, they are pulled into the special welding cars to be welded into continuous rail. As the sections are welded together, the rail comes out the other side of the welding car.
The welds are then ground flush with the railhead, making the joints smooth. Using a special slider to help load the rail, the welded pieces are loaded onto special cars for transport to the job location. At the location where the rail will replace the older jointed sections, a special anchor provides a footing to secure the end of the section, allowing the train to move out from under the rail. Cautiously, the job proceeds, making sure there are no problems with the unloading of the heavy rail. Great Northern first acquired electrics in 1909 from Baldwin and Westinghouse and began to add additional units to their fleet in December of 1926. Known as the Cascade Electrics, a Z1 electric powered the first train through the newly completed Cascade Tunnel on January 12, 1929. Fifty fifteen is a Y1 class electric and is rated at 3,000 horsepower. There are a total of eight locomotives in this class and are categorized as having two three-axle powered trucks. Great Northern's maintenance facility for repair and servicing is located at Apple Yard in Wenatchee, Washington. These units could operate in single or multiple lash-ups along with diesel locomotives. This freight is led by a 6,000 horsepower set of F7s with two Y1 electrics cut in as mid-train helpers. Another train arrives from the east with electric helpers cut in at mid-train. As they arrive in town, the helpers will be cut out. As the diesels pull one half of the train forward, the helper electrics bring up the rear of the train to the crossover switches.
In this early black and white scene taken in 1948 at Leavenworth, Washington, electrics are providing all the power for the climb over the Cascade Mountains. Electric 5011 was wrecked and has been rebuilt using two FT cabs into this unique double-ended arrangement. The largest electrics ever built were two W1 class monsters that weighed 775,000 pounds each. They could provide 5,000 horsepower and all axles are driven by traction motors. These units were built by General Electric and delivered to the Great Northern in June of 1947. Great Northern was not the only road to operate electrics over the Rocky Mountains. The Milwaukee Road also successfully used electrics. The Classic Collectors 2 Series. The Great Northern Railway. The most prestigious and critically acclaimed series in railroading history returns as Video Rails presents the all-new 8mm Classic Collectors Series on the Great Northern. This incredible collection, which is comprised of footage spanning over 30 years, has been photographed by Anthony DeRosa, who worked for the Great Northern Railway. You will treasure the extensive variety of subjects and unique perspectives that make this series one of the most comprehensive collections of railroading films ever compiled on any railroad. Climb aboard as Video Rails takes you on a remarkable journey back in time to the legendary days of the Great Northern. Great Northern's vast rail network stretched across seven states from the Great Lakes to the Pacific Ocean. With headquarters located in Minneapolis, St. Paul, the route extends north to Duluth and Superior and south to Sioux Falls. Climbing west to Minot, North Dakota and Great Falls, Montana, and continuing across the Rockies to Spokane. The main line extends south to Klamath Falls, Oregon, with connections to the Western Pacific. The route finally reaches Seattle, Washington, the West Coast gateway to the Orient. Built in February of 1939, this SW-1 was one of nine switchers within this class and originally numbered 5101. It was renumbered as 75 in 1943. These switchers were 600 horsepower and purchased to replace old worn out steam.